do you enjoy running campaigns involving people marching in the westward direction? Because I do, so I've run a lot of them. If you can tell, I had no clue how to start this video, so I guess I'll just get right to the point. If you don't know what West March's campaigns are, I have an entire video covering that and why you should run one, which I'll have linked in the doobly-doo. But now we're gonna move right to my advice for making your campaign the best possible campaign it can be. Or maybe you'll only like a single tip here, in which case your campaign will hopefully still be better than it would be if you had not watched the video. I really need to work on these intros. I'll start with one of the most common pieces of advice for this style, which is to roll your dice out in the open. You might be sick of hearing this if you've watched a bunch of other videos about this, but it's pretty common advice for a reason. It really helps sell the idea that you're impartial to everything and that it really is the players against the wilderness, desperately trying to survive against insane odds. Also, the feeling at the table as you're rolling for some crazy attack from the enemy that'll determine whether one of the party members lives or dies is just so good and makes the game so much more fun. The next tip is more of just a homebrew rule that I stole from Reddit a while back called Undying Legacy. This is where if the player writes a backstory that includes a character ambition, then they get an ability called Undying Legacy. This is a one-time use ability that lets the player get back up if they're down, and then they have max HP and their full turn to do whatever they want. This simultaneously makes the campaign a little less lethal, especially early on, and also will lead to almost every single player making an ambition for their characters, which is super important because those ambitions are what actually drive the campaign usually. Overall, it's a really nice addition, and it can lead to some really cool moments where a player uses it during a big boss fight, and then manages to take down the villain right afterward and save everyone. Next up is another fairly common tip for West March's games, and that's to incentivize your players to actually write summaries. Seriously, this is so critically important, because otherwise players won't have any idea what's going on during other sessions, so your recurring villains and big crazy plotlines won't even be recognized or have any importance drawn to them. Also, if there's no summaries, then people will end up exploring the same area multiple times because they won't know that it's already been checked out and it's just a whole mess. My main strategy for getting players to write summaries is to have it where they get an inspiration for the next session if they write one. I also have a few secondary ways of getting people to write summaries, like one time a player had written a lot of summaries in a row, so I had the local bard offer to pay them money in exchange for being able to write a song about their tales. The player was really excited that their tales were going to be well known by the town, and also they got some extra money too. I also do stuff like that for mapping, where if one player does a lot of work for mapping, then I maybe have the local mining guild offer to pay them for a copy of the map that they can use for planning out new excavations and such. Now, I've got a bit of a controversial opinion for this next tip. In most West March's guides, they say that there shouldn't be any quests in the city, and you should tell your players this immediately so they know that they actually have to go outside the walls and take risks. I agree with the second half of that sentence, where you tell the players that there are no quests in the city, but then I think you should break that rule. Not immediately, of course. Wait until a month or more into the campaign before you break it, and only do that occasionally. Have there be these big, notable events going on in the city that some players might end up doing stuff with? Like, maybe there's a serial killer on the loose, and a few players band together to make a small investigation team to track her down. Or maybe there's a big party going on at the Baroness's castle, but one of the players knows about, or was possibly even invited to, a plot to kill her. Now they need to either get a team together to carry out the assassination, or get a team together to stop it. And either way, it's a chaotic, fun adventure that's a nice break from the exploration and dungeon crawling of the typical West Marches game. I would recommend that you don't make this too common of an occurrence, though, because then you might start to get the problem of players just wanting to stay in the city during sessions to try to find an easy adventure. Just make sure to sparingly use city adventures, and also make sure they're a bit more dangerous than the outside sessions, and you should be good to have some awesome and memorable sessions set inside the city. These next two tips are kind of similar to each other, so I'm just going to combine them. Loot Rooms and Plot Hooks Loot Rooms are the idea of having a room in the dungeon that is somehow inaccessible the first time you go there. 
Maybe because there's high-level enemies guarding it, a puzzle that the party doesn't solve immediately, or maybe a magic item they need to go find and bring back there. This is to the party going back to the city and talking about these rooms in their summary, potentially causing other groups to end up going back to that dungeon to try to break into the loot room and get the treasure for themselves before other people can get it. This leads me into talking about plot hooks. Hand out a lot of these. Seriously, you want to give out as many potential leads to adventures as possible, because the players are without a doubt going to accidentally dismiss like half of them as unimportant, and if the players ever think they've run out of adventures, then they might start not knowing what to do. Then there will be less sessions happening and people will start getting bored and the campaign will start spiraling towards death. The solution? Give out a shitload of plot hooks. I try to introduce or tie in a couple every single session, so that way if the players ever do have a session where they end up running into zero new adventure hooks, then I don't have to worry because there's already like 20 other ones that they know about, so it's not a problem. Also, having this many adventure hooks out there means that the players have a lot of different options for what they want to do during each session, so they have way more variety and types of quests to go on. My last piece of advice is pretty simple, and is also the one I feel is most important while also being applicable to basically all types of campaigns. Embrace the chaos. I know that sometimes it may seem that by allowing a player to start mass-producing cannons to defend the city, it's gonna break stuff. Instead think about how cool that player will feel once they manage to get the factory built up, and set up a trade route to some iron mine in the woods, and finally actually start mass-producing the cannons. There's so many adventures that will be a part of the build-up, and honestly things like that don't even break anything as much as it might seem. Let the player perform some crazy month-long ritual to Asmodeus that creates a hell portal. Let the player build their steampunk airship. Let the player hunt down all the materials she needs to become a vampire. These are the crazy things that you'll all be talking about a few years after the campaign, so don't try to stifle these things just for fear of balancing being a problem. After all, you can always just throw bigger and scarier enemies at them if they get too tough, or even worse than stronger enemies is kobolds. Seriously, my players would rather fight a goddamn Tarrasque than have to go into a kobold dungeon. Anyway, those are my tips for running a West Marches style tabletop RPG campaign, and if you have any thoughts on this guide or if you have any tips of your own, feel free to put them in the comments down below. Well, that's all for this video, so don't forget, when in doubt, throw an owlbear at the party.